So this video is in response to the video that uh, Owen from Circle of Tone recently uploaded where he stated that guitar was dead and I am here to tell you that he is correct and I actually um, am in a very similar position to Owen whereby I am also originally from the UK now living in America and I'm also old enough to remember the heyday of 80s metal. Now, in terms of full disclosure, I don't know Owen, never spoken to Owen. Um, seems like a nice guy, would gladly have a chat with him, collaborate, whatever. But the point of this video is to tell you why everything he said is more or less correct. Now, the first thing I have to say is the internet has killed the rock star. It's the internet, nothing else. And I say that because in the 80s, even in the 90s, in the UK, there were only two sources to get information on rock and metal music. The first one being the magazine Kerrang, which was a weekly publication which covered uh, rock slash metal music. The other was a one-hour TV show once a week, uh, initially called The Power Hour and uh, laterally was called Raw Power. Now, why do I say the internet has killed the guitar hero? Quite simply, in the 80s and 90s we only got one magazine and one TV show that gave us the exposure to the guitar heroes. So there was still the element of mystique. Nowadays, you can go onto Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and you can see what Zach Wilde is having for breakfast. You can see Kirk Hammett, I don't know, taking his kids to go surfboarding or something. It's normalized these rock stars. We know every little detail about their lives. Nothing is left to the imagination, and they have become normal people. Back in the day, if you were lucky, you got an interview in Kerrang! with Adrian Smith and Dave Murray from Iron Maiden, which at most was maybe two pages, and that was the only time we heard these guys talk. We never... You know, we never saw these Instagram pictures of their daily lives. There was a mystique about these guys, which elevated them to godlike status. Same thing with, uh, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer. We only ever saw them in music videos or live in concert. Another thing the internet has really ruined, believe it or not, aside from the whole streaming, downloading thing, the internet has actually ruined the concert experience. Now I say that because before the internet you would buy a ticket to a show. You had no idea what the set list was going to be. You didn't know what the stage was going to look like. You didn't know what guitars they were going to use for certain songs. Now with things like Setlist FM and of course YouTube before you go to the concert, you know exactly what songs are coming up next. You know exactly what the stage is going to look like and what clothes are going to wear. There's no, there's nothing left for the surprise and the excitement. You know, you used to buy a ticket, you know, six months in advance and you'd pin that ticket on your wall, which actually was a ticket that had the band logo and everything. And it would be a real, um, there'd be a real anticipation about it because you did not know what songs you were going to hear. Whereas now everything is known in, in advance. Hell, even the bands post their set lists on uh, Facebook, Instagram, etc. So there's no surprise left. Now, also, the real drawback with the internet is you know when your favorite band is writing songs, you know when they're demoing songs, you even know when they're tuning their guitars in the studio. Prior to the internet, 
like I said, the only outlet of information was Kerrang! magazine and one TV show. And what would typically happen would be, maybe two weeks before the album comes out, there'd be an article in Kerrang! magazine saying, you know, on, you know, June 1st, new Megadeth album coming out. And they would maybe tell you the song names, if you were lucky. And then a week before the album came out, there would be a single released, and it would be typically released in a number of different formats. There would be a regular 7-inch, there'd be a 7-inch picture disc, there would be a 12-inch with a poster, and a cut-to-shape 12-inch with different B-sides. It was, it was exciting back then, because you had no idea these things were coming out, and a week before they come out, you see this advert in Kerrang! And you're like, oh damn, I've got to get my money, pocket money together to, to buy, you know, because you, you would want all the songs, and if you were one of these completists, you would want every format, but you would then look at the advert and say, okay, if I get the 7-inch picture disc, I get this B-side, but if I get the 12-inch, I get two B-sides, but not the B-side on the 12-inch with post... It was just... It was an amazing time because you really didn't know what was coming at you. So, combined with the fact that there was very little information on the Guitar Heroes back then, these guys were really elevated to godlike status because they were so elusive. They rarely gave interviews, and if they did, it was typically in print media. Whereas now, like I said, Facebook, Instagram, you know everything about these guys' lives. And it's just become, they've just become normal dudes who happen to have a job that involves playing guitar. So there are no guitar heroes these days. There are just guys who happen to play guitar in a band. So that, on that aspect, the guitar hero is dead. Now, I have a little checklist here because I'm going to ramble on here. So another thing regarding metal rock being dead that Owen brought up was the production of songs these days where it's always the vintage 30 speaker SM57 and everything sounds the same. Uh, I think part of the problem with that is that in this day and age everyone listens to music through tiny little earbuds which do not do justice to the to the sound. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, we had, you know, hi-fi systems. And in most cases, our parents had the best hi-fi systems. So when, if you were lucky, your parents would leave for the night and you would grab your Iron Maiden vinyl, stick it on their system, crank the volume, and just the sound was just glorious. You know, you, you'd have the walls shaking. It was just a wonderful time to experience the raw power that th this music can produce. But like I said, nowadays it's all in-ear, tiny little earbuds, tinny sound, not to mention, as Owen had stated before, the production values of the the very harsh 57 and the, you know, the what he said, the ice pick in the ears, it's so correct. There was a warmth to the sound in the 80s that's clearly missing these days. So um, let me just check the cheat sheet again. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Let me, you know, not to drag this on for too long, but uh, you know, I think the the current, you know, newer bands that are doing okay. Your Avenged Sevenfolds. Your Five Finger Death Punch type bands. There's just nothing about those bands that's going to last. Nothing. You know, you look back to classics like Number of the Beast from 1982. Okay, production wise, it could sound better, but the songwriting was what was important back then. Because the bands actually were in a room jamming together to come up with the material. Same with Metallica's Kill Em All, all the way through to uh, Master of Puppets. Those guys were in the garage just jamming out those songs. And there's a fluidity to the music 
that comes from jamming with other people. Nowadays, you sit, and I'm guilty of that as well, you sit with your easy drummer, superior drummer, and you're tapping out this, you know, drum beat, which you then copy and paste, so that every verse and chorus has the exact same drum pattern. And it's so rigid. Everything is rigid. There's no groove to the music these days, which is which is sad because, to be honest, groove will always be more important than speed or technic technicality. Absolutely, there are great guitar players coming out every single day. There's no question these guys have an immense talent. They're great at what they do, but they do not possess the, the groove and the soul that's required to, to make a convincing record. Um, it's, it's become, what, what they say, metal by numbers. It really is. Um, you know, and this fascination with speed and blast beats and these, you know, 16th note triplets on the kick drum that is clearly uh, faked with uh, triggers and whatnot, it's just awful. It really is awful. And I would just like to see young kids, you know, 16, 17, really immerse themselves in the classics of the 80s and use that as their teacher, as opposed to some some guy on YouTube who's, you know, showing you all this sweet picking, which it sounds it, phenomenal talent, make no mistake, but it doesn't make for good music. At the end of the day, the song is what matters. And that's kind of been lost, because now what you have is you have these guys who never get together, so they practice on their own. And they become phenomenal talents in their own right. But when they get together to record, they're all trying to outdo each other. You know, who can drum, like the, the drummer's trying to play so damn fast and put so many intricate kicks into the pattern. You got the, the two guitars are trying to outdo each other. And in the end, it just becomes a great pissing contest and the song is lost. It really is. So in, in terms of where metal and rock is going these days, it's hard to say. Now, even, even when the biggest metal band of all time Metallica, when they, the only time they get any real public exposure was during the Grammys, I think it was. And the only reason people talked about it was because it was with Lady Gaga. Nobody would be talking about Metallica had it just been Metallica. They, even they, had to bring in the mainstream pop artist to get people talking. So if Metallica have to use outside forces to to push the brand. There's no way that your average new, and when I say new, I mean N-E-W, metal band comes along. They, they have no chance, none whatsoever. And uh, it, it is pretty sad. And again, it all goes back to the internet. The internet has influenced, influenced us in so many negative ways. You know, just think back to the glory days where you would have the kid who just came home from the record store with his new Megadeth album and he puts it on his turntable and he's blown away by what he hears because it's like nothing he's ever heard before. You know, that doesn't happen now. Every band is using the same production values, the same song structure. There's nothing new, there's nothing exciting. And that's what's been lost. It's, you know, it's, you know, I know this is impossible to do, but if there was some way just to switch off the internet for a month, you would see so many great songs come out of that because no one has anything to refer, like kids write something and they say, oh, it doesn't sound enough like Avenged Sevenfold, so they scrap what they've done and they try and copy Avenged Sevenfold. You know, you don't copy, by all means be influenced by, but copying just leads to this blandness where everything sounds the exact same. Um, to be honest with you, in the last few years, only one band has really grabbed my attention, and that is Ghost. Because 
It's like nothing else currently out there, but you can really hear the influence from the early days. And as a result, they stand out. Their, their guitar tone is unique. It's not overly saturated. It's not all this shrieking mids. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And the, aside from anything else, uh, Tobias Forge is this phenomenal songwriter and vocalist, so that obviously helps. But the fact is, they didn't copy anything that we're hearing today. They are unique. And as a result, they're clearly on the rise. Um, who else? Oh, you know, I guess Volbeat are slightly more unique. Uh, you know, there's a rockabilly, country, metal thing. Again, there's not a lot of bands doing that, so they stand out. Uh, in terms of the the future of metal music, it, it really doesn't look particularly good. Um, I wish I could say differently, but again, I really do uh, agree with pretty much everything Owen said in his video. He was spot on, and... Uh, as much as I respect Rob Chapman as a guitar player and businessman, his, he's living in a different world to the rest of us. Um, he is highly successful, and, and because he put the hard work in, but you know he has the fan base that will, you know, agree with everything he says and does. Whereas people like Owen, and to a lesser extent myself, who has minimal followers. We are um, kind of keeping it real, so to speak, just telling the truth. So in, in closing this video, uh, all I can say is, please don't, don't try and copy everyone else out there. Be your own person. You know, I can guarantee you this, there is something for everybody out there. And if you just use your imagination and come up with something new, just because it doesn't sound like all these other metal bands, it's actually a good thing. I can guarantee you, come up with something that feels natural, but is not being influenced directly by the other bands, and someone out there will love it, and they'll tell someone else, and they'll love it, and it, it goes on that way. It's don't be afraid to try something new, or in this case, old whereby you go back to these classic albums and you try and Im immerse yourself in them and think to yourself, what made these albums so damn good that after 30 years they still stand the test of time? By all means, borrow from that, but just come up, be yourself, come up with something new and don't share your damn life on Facebook or Instagram. We do not need to know how good your bath, you know, bowel movement was, or what you had for dinner, or the name of your dog. Just play and learn the guitar, the drums, the bass, and meet with your friends and come up with something new and fresh. That's as simple as that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I did refer to the cheats sheet, but uh, this was a bit of a ramble, but uh, please do like and subscribe because I do have more content coming out and I hope you found it interesting. I hope you can see where older guys like myself and Owen are coming from. Uh, you know, we, we did come from a great time and, uh, you know, together we can maybe bring those days back. Who knows? But anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.